How the narc handles your money? Well, first off, let's just get this clear. They're special. You're not. <laughs> Narcs claim special status. Um, they believe that they are smarter with money than other people and that that gives them the right to make unilateral decisions about money that affect others without their input or consent. As I mentioned before, they, in other videos, they do feel entitled. They believe that your money is my money, but my money is mine. They will benefit from loans you took out at their request but refuse to repay, saying, it's your loan. I didn't sign for it. Then they turn around, get an inheritance, and claim it's not yours, and refuse to let you and their children share in the money or benefit from any significant portion of it. If you're lucky, you'll get scraps or what's left over after they've spent the majority of that money on themselves saying, it's mine, you don't deserve it. And they justify themselves over some wrong that maybe you did, or they think you did, perhaps a very, very long time ago. They will use your resourcefulness against you to gain control and to further empower themselves, but never use their resources to empower you, unless they somehow benefit from that. So when it comes to your money, well, you better believe your money is going to get used up first. Your resources are tapped first. Maybe you get pressured to take out early retirement or take out student loans or you get an inheritance. And so those resources get drained by the narc and they're never going to repay you back. No matter what they say, they are not paying you back. They want total financial dependence from you upon them. Well, at least that is when you have something to supply. Once you're drained of supply, they don't need you anymore. They don't want your dependence. But for the time being, they're going to want dependence upon them. But then they're going to turn around and punish you for it. They're very parasitic. They'll deplete and drain you. They're not going to reciprocate because reciprocation disrupts the power dynamic of them maintaining the upper hand, which is their power dynamic of choice. Remember, as I've said before, these are children who never learned how to share. Or worse, what they learned is that sharing is for the weak, who will be further weakened by the act of sharing. And so this is why they exploit. They leave you financially vulnerable. And then they tell you that you can't stand on your own two feet without them. Unfortunately, if you let them, these people will financially destroy you by ruining your credit, liquidating your assets, all to impress others and to finance a facade of normalcy. And all the while promising change, but never actually giving it. They will take your money and make you go broke. Maybe you're bailing them out from jail. Why would you do that? Oh, because he needs to get back to work and be a provider for the children. Something that actually narcs have no interest in doing, by the way, unless it empowers them. So this is how they keep this cycle going that, oh, well, you need them to get out of jail to get a job. So you keep bailing them out of jail, but they keep putting themselves in jail. Worst case scenario, these kind of people, particularly if they've got a bit of sociopathy mixed in here, <laughs> they they can commit financial crimes that could put you in jail and your kids in child protective services. These people spend recklessly. They create financial crises for the entire family to force others to give them money while further undermining their security. Remember, this whole power paradigm is only effective when you're dependent upon them for security 
and when you're empowering them with your resources and support by supplying their needs. And then they will rage and retaliate when family is justifiably angry over this exploitation and reckless behavior and having their security undermined. They refuse to address how they create serious problems for others. Why? Because they view people as objects, as extensions of themselves. They see no reason to have to share what's theirs or ask for what isn't. By the way, that's a quote from Little Shaman. And if you have not seen her channel uh, on, on narcissism, check it out. She's got a lot more resources than I have. Even though I do have a book, <laughs> she's got a great little channel, so check her out um, if you're interested. But look, the translation of this quote is simply this. You, you're just a pawn in their game. You're just a tool, a resource, a source of supply. To them, the ends justify the means, unfortunately. So let's talk about narc magnets and money. Oftentimes, self-worth and insecurity issues are connected to these money issues just in society we know that if you have no money in this culture that empowers people with money well you have no power then right and without power in this culture you have no value you are rendered irrelevant and inconsequential at least that's the way the culture makes it that's how the culture can make people feel very insecure very worthless so if you have no money you have no security and independence in our culture and that makes it hard to feel secure you may have to deprogram from childhood training that teaches you that your value is in what you give with a narc you will become like the giving tree with nothing left of you but a stomp for the narc to sit their ass upon. If you want to watch the next video in this series, then click here. Or if you want to watch my narcissism playlist, click here. Also, if you're interested in my book on narcissism, check it out at Amazon, Audible, Kindle. Links are down below. Till next time, thanks for watching, commenting, liking, sharing, and subscribing.